So mudlarking uh, these days is when people go down looking for treasure or historical objects that have been lost or accidentally lost along the River Thames. Originally, the term comes from the Victorian mudlarks who were searching for anything they could find, find to survive and anything that they could immediately resell. Uh, so for instance, they were looking for practical items like coal, rope, chains, uh, workmen's tools that they lost, and they would literally take it from the riverbed and take it up to the river bank and try to resell that and make a bit of money so they could buy some bread or some food for their families. Uh, so going down to the foreshore has a lot of dangers associated with it. Most people don't realize, but the water level rises and falls about 7 to 10 meters twice a day. That's roughly the height of a two-story building. So that's a lot of water going in and out of London, and it's constantly changing, and the river is very fast. So when you get down to the foreshore, after you clamber down a ladder or find some nice stairs to go down, uh, you're greeted by a whole eclectic mix of different things on the foreshore. And there's a lot of bricks, a lot of broken glass, uh, pins, needles, a lot of nasty things down there. And that's why we wear uh, very sturdy footwear and things that have thick soles just to make sure that nothing punctures the bottom of our shoes. So there's a lot of uh, things that you do have to be careful about. Also a lot of trip hazards. And the most important thing is to watch the tides and to know where your exit is so that you know how to escape if you do get into trouble. I'll start with one of my oldest finds, and this is actually uh, something very unusual. It's from the 14th century, and this is actually a medieval knight's knuckle guard, so an original knuckle duster. So this is a brass knuckle from the 14th century. Uh, so what a knight would have had is what they call a gauntlet, which is something that they would put their hand into. It's almost like a glove. It would have leather underneath, and then this kind of shell of brass would be punched and hammered and uh, just kind of formed and then sewn. And you can see the two holes on both sides with kind of show how it was actually fixed to the leather glove. Small garnets, which are uncut and very rough. So this, for instance, is uh, a pendant that's been made with some of the uncut garnets that we find in the Thames. And two years ago, I found a large cut garnet, which is 8.2 carats um, in weight. And this is one of the largest ones ever found in the Thames. And you can see it here. And I had this uh, made into a necklace for my wife as an anniversary gift last year. So this is a token, a trade token from the 17th century, and it actually has the quintessential date, 1666, stamped into it. Coins of that time period didn't actually have dates written on them, so this is a very unique find to find a trade token that's dated to 1666. And on the front of the coin is a, a beautiful horse, and it's actually a packed horse, and the trader's name is from Devon. Um, so we think that this packed horse was actually coming into London, bringing in building supplies to rebuild London. So it's possible the coin was lost after the Great Fire and was involved with actually the rebuilding of the capital city that was destroyed during the Great Fire of London. So this is the only gold coin that I've ever found in the River Thames. It's dated 1803, and it's got uh, King George III, his bust is on the front, and it's a third guinea. So a guinea was the most valuable coin at that time period, and this is a third, which is the smaller version of the large guinea. The thing that fascinates me the most about mudlarking is just the thrill of the hunt. A lot of times you have to wake up very early in the morning because a tide happens uh, around 8 a.m. sometimes. So I wake up at 5 in the morning. It's freezing cold outside. It's dark. It's miserable. It's rainy. And you put on all of your clothes. And the only thing that could possibly get me out of bed is the thrill of possibly finding something historically important or very unique. 